this week's episode, I'll be going over the most important crypto markets, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana, but I'll also look at different altcoins for potential plays for the week ahead. Let's get to it. All right, guys, welcome back. Welcome back to another episode. Good to have you back here. Let's uh, dive into the charts. But before we do, um, small update, small update on the way I'm going to uh, do things from now on. I have decided to uh, take out the uh, trader talk and the market mastery segments out of the weekly uh, recaps. So it doesn't mean I'm going to uh, stop doing them all together but I'm just removing them from the weekly recaps. The reason for that is pretty simple. Uh, there's actually two reasons. Uh, one of them is it'll make these videos a little shorter. Uh, shorter isn't necessarily better, but if you want to win at this YouTube game, you got to have people watching as close to the entire video as possible. So if people are tuning in and they uh, run into stuff they don't really care about, um, Instead of fast forwarding or just clicking through to another segment in the video, what people do is they close the video and that hurts your video statistics, um, meaning the algorithm doesn't care for your channel as much as I want it to, to do. Yeah, uh, as I want it to. So that's one, it'll make video shorter. Uh, second, it'll make the title and the video itself more specific. Uh, which is also very important to do. The, there, there has to be a, a really strong overlap be between the, the title of the video and the actual content of the video. Um, so if I go over too many different kinds of things in one video, uh, the title and the... There's going to be a, a too big of a gap between the title of the video and the content of the video. So this way I can make videos shorter, I can make them more specific, um, and I think that'll be better for everyone. Uh, with that said, let's get to uh, the charts. So for starters, we're going to have a look at Bitcoin. Uh, and Bitcoin is important. And yes, this is the monthly chart. Oh, can you imagine? Can you believe I'm looking at a monthly chart? Um, I am indeed. I am indeed. And this is, uh, this is an important chart because a lot of people, especially on social media, uh, are talking about seasonality again. Seasonality meaning looking at the past, what has an asset done um, during the same month, so during the month of December in this case. And what they'll tell you is that Decembers are really bad months for risk assets. Now, while that can be true, and it is actually true, uh, especially for things like the uh, S&P, uh, Decembers don't tend to do well. Another argument for uh, bad Decembers right now as well, a lot of the uh, upward price action, a lot, of, a lot of the volume is made up by uh, institutional investments, investing, uh, the ETFs in general, uh, or more specifically the ETFs, uh, the Bitcoin ETFs. Um, and December is a slow month for TradFi, for traditional finance. Uh, therefore, um, Bitcoin should be slow or slower um, than it has been for the last month. Now, while that may be true and could be true, and is something you could keep in mind, uh, as I've said many times before, everything is a matter of probability. Never, never is it about certainties because it never, ever is. Um, so yeah, while you could keep that in mind, please also have a look at the following. And that is what happens when we get a convincing monthly close through previous resistance? What happens when that occurs? So if we look at 2017, right? We get the, the price action here. We get the first high created over here. Now we get price running into the same monthly resistance. Now, as you can see what happens, we get a convincing monthly close through it. Now you could say, well, this isn't really convincing. 
because it, ha it hasn't really closed uh, above the previous month's wick. Um, while that could be true, you could argue that. Um, in that case, you could just say, well, let's just have this monthly close instead. Uh, what we get is one month of upside, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight months of upside. Uh, that is a lot. That is that is uh, quite a lot, uh, as you can see here. Eight month, eight months of uh, of upside. And that is significant. So that is what happened in two thousand and seventeen uh, when we got a monthly close through previous monthly resistance. Uh, we had a lot of months of, of upside. Now we get to, to the second one, which is 2020. We get these highs here, get the high here. It's resistance, resistance again. Uh, we get back to it over here. Sorry, over here. The month is then October. It is. Uh, uh, it doesn't close through resistance, but then we get November, uh, December, sorry. Is that true? No, November, sorry. I have to look over my microphone like an idiot. Uh, so we get this close. It is a convincing close. And funnily enough, 2020 uh, is important because it's also a uh, election year. We then get one, two, three, four, five months of Bitcoin upside. We um, get a... Um, oops. We get a 300... 80 percent uh, gain which is uh, of course quite a lot important to note is that the upside potential of bitcoin does um, decrease every bull run uh, so as you can see here we had a 1500 percent gain then we had a 380 percent gain then here we had a 130 percent gain so is it a given the current gain the current upward movement is going to be lower than 133 percent it is not but it is probable uh, in any case we get the uh, we get a slight um we get slight price action over here uh, not as significant as the previous highs but it is still a minor high which is then broken and then afterwards, we get six months of upside, uh, upside meaning a uh, 133% gain. Now, this is only the first month of upside. This is the very first month. Now, could does that mean we'll have multiple months ahead of us of upside? Uh, does that mean we'll only have upside from now on, meaning we'll have no pullbacks? Uh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't, but it it's 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 not probable it's it's not probable that it's going to happen meaning it's not probable we'll only have one month of upside it is way more likely we'll have multiple months of upside because on, on the monthly chart we have a convincing breakout uh which is just it's it's important it, it doesn't it doesn't happen often that we get a convincing monthly close and then afterwards we have one week of upside or or, or uh, only one month of upside so this is a very important chart. Uh, I have posted this chart on Twitter. So have a look uh, if you want. You can save it if you want. You could even retweet it if you want. Uh, but it's it's an important chart. So um, yeah, with that said, let's uh, dive into the uh, slightly lower time frames and uh, see what we have here. Uh, on the daily, we had a slight <clears throat> a slight dip. Uh, it was it was it was an actual really slight dip, uh, not even ten percent. People were calling for uh, seventy and eighty thousand uh, again, uh, which is what is supposed to happen. I've posted this on Twitter as well. But the most important symptom of a bull market is dips being bought up pretty fast and pretty aggressively. Um, so that is that is what happened here. Only a few days of downside. And then within a few days, we have recovered almost the entire move up. A lot of people are saying $100,000 is a psychological uh, level, a psychological barrier. 
while that could be true and while that is true sometimes round numbers do tend to be targets for people who who cannot determine prices or targets um otherwise or, or any other way i don't think we're gonna have much trouble going or passing through a uh, hundred thousand dollars this is also a level where at, at all time highs right where we're we're, we're, well, we're uh, consolidating below all time highs uh, we've just put in fresh highs uh, only um, uh, a week ago and uh, large speculators are heavily shorting this move uh, you can look into uh, cot data commitment of traders i won't be looking into that right now but you could if you wanted to you could look it up uh, and you'll see that large speculators are heavily short now you could argue well aren't large speculators like hedge funds usually on the right side of the trade no no that is that is actually uh, not the case and the more crowded a certain direction of a trade becomes the more likely they are going to be on the wrong side of the trade you got to you got to keep in mind you always have to keep in mind that most traders most of the time are not profitable and an even larger percentage of those traders will become unprofitable if you give it enough time so it cannot happen and it does not happen that most people are on the right side of the trade meaning that if most large speculators are going to be short most of them are going to be wrong does that mean they're going to be wrong right now it doesn't but give it enough time and they will become wrong on this now they could of course um they could of course cover their shorts while we are um uh, trading sideways uh they could be covering their shorts and and uh, cot data data will become more neutral or become more skewed to the uh, long side that could happen but right now that doesn't show that that that's not the case uh, meaning if we get aggressive up movement again uh, the chances of a short squeeze happening will uh, exponentially increase uh, which is what i'm hoping will happen and which is what i think will happen and is also why i speculate that we'll be uh, crossing through the 100,000 level pretty aggressively um i've also said a lot of times in the past that when when there's an obvious level to sell or buy at imagine just imagine a uh, hundred thousand dollars, right? It's a very obvious level to sell at, or you could speculate that it is a, a a a very obvious level to sell at. If you know, as a big buyer, a lot of people are going to be selling at a hundred thousand um, dollars. That is also a good level to buy. If you need volume, if you if you want volume, you need volume. Uh, you need volume on the other side of your trade um and people who are going to be selling here and are going to see price move upward are going to be caught on the wrong side of the trade uh, are going to catch fomo and are going to be buying their bags higher uh, i'm almost certain almost certain people who are going to be selling their bags at a hundred thousand are going to be selling to the more sophisticated investor uh, and the more sophisticated investor is going to sell his uh uh, his uh, newly bought bags which he bought at a hundred thousand dollars back to the same sellers around a hundred a hundred and twenty a hundred and thirty thousand uh, so that is my current opinion on bitcoin i would like us to see trade sideways for a little bit longer uh, that means usually the eth btc chart will start looking uh, better will start to improve meaning eth can catch a bid meaning our uh, precious lower cap altcoins will start to really really go wild which is where the actual insanity happens and where the actual crazy money is uh, is made so let's have a look at ethereum um this is my current uh outlook on ethereum um got the 200 daily moving average let me change that to the 52 week moving average as you can see 
uh, when we got this price action here, uh, this is where I wanted to go short, hoping we close below these levels here. We didn't get it. We get a great weekly recovery, not only through the 52 week moving average, but also through this support resistance uh, level over here. Beautifully uh, and convincingly, convincingly broke out of this range, out of this structure. We didn't get the perfect retest, unfortunately, where my bids were. Uh, that doesn't matter. What I'm looking for now is a breakout out of this triangle. Uh, we are currently nearing the end of the apex of the triangle, which is why I would want to see it break out of this uh, either uh, either this week, uh, so like today, which I don't think will happen. Uh, so I want to see it happen next week or the week after, but not wait for too long. Um, as I've said before, the more you get into the apex of the triangle, the less reliable this entire chart pattern becomes. Uh, but right now, this is clearly shown to be a support. Uh, and this is clearly shown to be resistance, right? Um, so we could see it become resistance again, possibly see a small uh, correction occur. Hopefully, I don't think it will happen. We get a correction all the way back down here uh, and then break out of this symmetrical triangle. Uh, the only thing, the only level we'll have to cross is previous all-time highs at 4,800, 4,800. But after, the, after that, we should be good to really uh, run. You could set targets uh, in a, a variety of uh, ways. What you could do is you could come in and say, well, let's have a, uh, let's draw a, a Fibonacci retracement. And what you get and what you see is you get the 1.618 level, which is here. And then you get to 2.618 level, which is here. And you could even come and that does happen um, every, every now and then uh, when things get really, really nuts. Uh, and really go parabolic, you get even the uh, 3.618 level, which would be this level here. Uh, so these are three levels to watch if you're a Fibonacci trader for Ethereum. Uh, if you say, well, this is a symmetrical triangle, uh, you could say, okay, well, like, let's uh, take the size of the triangle, which is the highest point and the lowest point, and then you draw the exact same height at the breakout level, which would be around this level here, which is 21,000. Uh, that is not how I do it. If I were to take the entire size of the triangle, I draw it like this, change 2%, move it up, then change back to a log chart, and we get the price over here which I would think is more realistic and more important than the uh, one I just uh, drew before this. Um, but it is something you, uh, you could uh, uh, look at, look for. Some people take the uh, lowest point and then draw it up to the uh, uh, next high point, which is here. You can do the exact same thing. Uh, but I'm not going to draw too many too many levels on, on this uh, right now. Uh, but I think this first level is going to be very important because it's both the um, uh, 1.618 Fib level and it's also the uh, realistic level for the symmetrical triangle. So this would probably be my target for Ethereum, which is a pretty uh, considerable move. Um, it is almost a move of, uh, no, it's, it is actually a, a, a 2x, and that is, uh, that is a lot. And as you know, when Ethereum starts to run, when it decides to really go, it can go pretty quickly and pretty aggressively. Uh, so even though I have this chart pattern drawn on the weekly chart, uh, my uh, alert should go off when it, uh, yeah, I have not changed that yet. I want it to go off when it crosses up on the daily instead of the weekly, just so I can uh, pull the trigger uh, ever so 
um, ever so uh, ever ever more quickly. Because if this, if I wait for a signal to be given on the weekly, which I usually do uh, when trading stocks, when trading forex, crypto is just so incredibly aggressive, man. It, it can if 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 this gets a weekly close through this symmetrical triangle, it could actually look, uh, it could actually look like this, right? This could be the weekly close. Um, what the fuck just happened? Let me remove this. Could actually look like this, right? And then the second week we'll get the uh, we'll get there. Uh, I don't want to miss half of the move when I could be in uh, more, uh, uh, could be in sooner. So that is my view on Ethereum uh, right now. Of course, this could change at any moment. I could literally uh, stop recording. Uh, this could go uh, down and things would be uh, different, uh, completely, completely different. So do keep that in mind when you are trading the ideas I am giving you. Solana, Solana, Solana. Solana is... Um, I am actually long Solana. Um, I am long Solana. What, what worries me is the potential head and shoulders forming. Uh, I have mentioned this last week. I am currently long uh, Solana uh, from this level here. If you've watched any of my streams so far, you know I'm a, a big, big fan of the thrust candle closing through uh, important levels and then going long on the last high pre-breakout, which is uh, the entry I got, which was a perfect, perfect fucking entry. Uh, so I am currently long. Uh, it is looking good, but we haven't had a uh, confirmation yet that this chart pattern is invalidated. This chart pattern has not been invalidate, invalidated yet. If this starts consolidating uh, for too long, it will be invalidated, and it'll also be invalidated once we break above this high. So this high is very important to my position right now. Uh, what I would ideally like to see is a close and a, uh, a break and a close through this level, uh, which is the level I will add to the position as well. My first target is the uh, equal highs. Uh, depending on price action, depending on the uh, rest of the market, I may actually pull 50% of the sell order and only sell half of the position. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see what happens. Uh, but for now, this is my plan on Solana. I want to jump into a uh, trade I had last week. Because, man, this trade was absolutely fucking perfect. Um, this trade was, uh, was very nice. Uh, it's one of those trades you don't run into often because they're just so damn perfect. So... Um, yeah, I, I actually removed all the, uh, drawings because I'm looking to position or reposition into this uh, chart based on, uh, the higher time frame. But let me run you or walk you. I'm going to walk you through this. I'm not going to run you through this. We're going to take it easy. We're in no rush and you could, uh, learn a thing or two about this or from this. If you pay uh, attention. I was bullish uh, the uh, DAX because I'm bullish. I was bullish um, uh, most of the indices. Most of the indices are are running uh, really good. Are trading uh, higher and higher and higher. The beauty of this chart is uh, the um, uh, the trend line here. Beautiful and absolutely perfect uh, support over here. We got a beautiful. Uh, daily um, hammer as well. So all in all, I'm bullish DAX, right? Then we get this support resistance flip as well. We get the minor high, we get another test, and we get another test, and then we get a break through this, right? Now we retest it, and it is clearly support every single time. Then we get the weekly candle over here, which is another bullish hammer, which has also retested previous support. So again, in my mind, my bias is bullish DAX. Uh, but I want to find an entry. I didn't, I didn't get the entry I want. 
until we get the price action uh, over here. We get this structure, right? We get these highs. This is a very, this is very uh, unnatural. It's probably only on this chart. If you look at a different chart, it probably won't be this perfectly horizontal. Uh, but in any case, I, I was looking at this chart. We get these highs here, and then we get this thrust candle. Again, man, you're going to hear me say thrust candle on this stream so many fucking times. It's going to drive you absolutely insane. Uh, but hopefully that means you're going to remember it and you're going to uh, look at it. Now, this high doesn't really close convincingly through this high here, but it does close through all the other highs here making it uh, important to me. So what I want to do is I want to bid the last high pre-breakout, and I want to bid it after uh, one hourly candle has um, uh, has been created uh, and is closed. So I never bid the immediate retest. I only buy the rounded retest, right? Uh, so I am not filled here. I am filled on this candle here. My stop is, uh, I think this candle looked different on the chart I actually traded. So it is below the thrust candle that closed, closed through all these highs here. Anyway, uh, I am filled. I am uh, clearly not stopped out, not even close. And the beauty of this is, right, you get filled and you don't spend any time uh, with a negative PL. The only, um, well, minute it occurs is 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 here somewhere so you go into the red only ever so slightly and then you get the move up right and that is just nice uh you're you're chilling uh, it's looking good i don't move my stop up yet uh, i only move my stop up when we get um a, a good reason a good technical reason to do so which we haven't gotten here now we get this candle, right? We get this uh, thrust candle through the highs here. We get another rounded retest of the last high pre-break, which is the moment I add to the trade. And I don't only add to the trade, I actually double the position uh, because the previous position, the stop is moved up. Um, so I am uh, not risking any capital on the trade right now, and I still want to uh, risk a total of 0.5% of my of my trading capital on the trade, so I can open another entirely different trade which risks 0.5%. Uh, so I get the fill, and then we just go straight up, right? We just go straight up. Uh, this wasn't the target. I apologize. This was the um, this was the target, which is filled. Only a few hours later, of course, price moves up way higher afterwards, but that doesn't matter. You stick to the plan. Uh, the plan was uh, was done, was completed. Uh, so what I'm looking for now is price to uh, close through the highs here on the daily chart. So we can then uh, long up to 2,800. So yeah, that is my... Uh, my uh, probably going to be my trade of uh, next week. Let's have a look at a few. I don't know why these are these are under uh, commodities. They should not be under commodities. They should be here. Um, actually, let me go over a commodity trade I'm looking at for next week as well. Uh, that is uh, silver. Silver is interesting because it has potentially sprung a uh, a bear trap. Uh, why do I say this? We get this uh, low, we get this low, and we get this low, right? And what people are thinking, well, this is forming a head and shoulders. Uh, you could draw it horizontally, you could draw it diagonally. I prefer the horizontal one. Um, uh, if this is a head and shoulders, uh, we're back at the neckline. We're going we're gonna to close through it, and then we're going to be short the uh, break of the head and shoulders. Um, but that didn't happen. You know, we get a, uh, a hammer, a bullish hammer. Not a very significant one, I have to add, but it's still a, a, a hammer. Um, so I think a lot of people are caught, caught on the wrong side of the trade here. I think a lot, a lot of people are shorting or are still short. 
and are hoping for a breakdown, which they uh, may not get. So what do I want to do? Well, there, there's two options. One is a uh, invalidation of the head and shoulders, of the head and shoulder uh, um, um, chart pattern, which only happens after a daily close above the uh, right shoulder over here. Uh, so it will be something like this. Uh, that is option one. But the other option is going long on the naked level uh, of the hammer head, the high of the hammer. Uh, which I have marked, as you can see. And if you go down to the hourly, that looks actually pretty, pretty damn good. Uh, why? It is a, a last high three breakout out of this structure here. Uh, and it is also a close through uh, this uh, uh, price action over here, because this could turn into resistance, but you can obviously see it doesn't. Uh, so that is bullish. Uh, the level is also naked. It is not retested immediately, right? There's no immediate retest. It is obviously a rounded retest. So I'm really looking to position long next week at this level. Uh, would I pull this order if something happens? Yes, absolutely. If we get a slow drift down to this level, I will pull the order. I really want to see this filled either Monday or on Tuesday, right? So we get a pretty aggressive move into that level. Uh, my stop is down below here because this is a thrust candle through these highs here. So this makes sense as a stop. Uh, and I would then position long all the way up to this high here. You could even target this high even uh, or even uh, this high. I'm personally going for the most obvious swing high over here. Uh, so that would be a really good trade if we get it. Uh, it doesn't really matter what the R is, but let's just have a look for the sake of it. Uh, Two point uh, almost seven R. So that is uh, that is uh, good. Oh, I drew the uh, stop wrong. Sorry, it is actually over here. Uh, so it's a four point sixty seven R trade, which is uh, which is really good, which is really good. Uh, the only reason why I don't like the stop over here is because these highs are also naked. Uh, this is a thrust. This is uh, the last high pre breakout. So I don't know, not not a huge fan of, uh, of this structure here. But if this is really going to be bullish, you shouldn't want to see price back down all the way here and retest these levels. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll reconsider maybe Putting my stop down here, uh, but let's uh, let's wait and see. Let's go over a few uh, altcoins. Let me have a sip of my drink first. Um, got some ASMR going for you as well. No problem. We got Evo, Evo. Um, Evo is uh, <coughs> Evo is looking good as well. Um, why you ask? I have gone over this already, but we get the uh, the double bottom right uh, as marked on the chart. The uh, double bottom is confirmed by the volume. Uh, you want to see the second bottom be of lower volume than the first. So if we turn on volume. You'll see we got huge selling volume here. And then over, over here, we have almost no volume. Uh, so that is, a, that is a very important thing to note. Uh, and then you get the confirmed breakout after it has um, closed through the uh, double bottom neckline. And the double bottom neckline is the highest point in between the double bottoms, right? Double bottom, highest point between double bottoms. You have to have a close, a daily close above this level. So we get that over here, which is when I positioned long um, on this chart, on this coin. Um, I'm thinking we should at least be able to retest uh, these levels over here, these uh, significant lows. So we'll have to wait and see. Obviously, this is a important level to cross if we do get that if we do get the uh, close and the retest 
of this level here on the hourly or the four hourly i will be i will be looking to add to this trade uh, and not before that you could potentially mark this level as well as it is an important uh, support resistance flip too um but i don't find that to be necessary as it is a less obvious uh, less clean level to me than this one is and of course this one is so that is my current position on uh, evo uh, then we got id these are my thoughts on id and 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 <laughs> let me tell you i don't know what what any of these coins do right i don't i don't know i don't want to know i don't really care what they do what they are how bullish you are and why you are bullish on them because they're changing the world one day at a time they're not i mean look I gotta be honest with you most of you are uh, probably not really experienced um with uh trading or, or with crypto specifically and that's okay that is okay uh, but know where you stand and if this is your first cycle i actually posted about this on twitter uh, today i'm gonna uh, open this up for you uh here we go what i said was if this is your first bull run or even your second you're gonna see big accounts throwing out price predictions of your favorite coins. They'll light up the warmest corners of your soul, filling you with hope and dreams. And that is exactly why you're going to lose everything. Things could get wild. I mean, really, really wild with those sky high price predictions. I mean, they're bait, guys. They're bait, a trap to reel you in as a follower, sell you a course or push, push you into a paid group that teaches you nothing. For the love of everything that is sacred, do not miss out on life-changing gains because some clown on Twitter swore XRP is heading to $10,000. I'm telling you right now, this is going to happen, right? I'm going to be charting some coin. You're going to be in this. You're, you've bought maybe the bottom of this, right? And you're following Twitter accounts that are all bullish all bullish on ID. And again, I don't know what this does, but they create an echo chamber, right? Your algorithm is only going to show you accounts that are very bullish on ID. They're going to tell you, look, this is probably going to run to $80. And you're going to be thinking, holy shit, wait a second. I have like, um, I have like 50,000 of these coins, right? If this goes to a hundred bucks, oh my God, I'm going to be a fucking gazillionaire. Um, it's gonna it's gonna keep you up at night. You're gonna be spending the money you don't even have yet. You're gonna be looking for new uh, houses to live in. You're gonna be buying your girlfriend all kinds of new presents. You're gonna think you're gonna be a future millionaire based on these insane price predictions. And I have to tell you, I honestly have to tell you, 99% of all those price predictions are fucking bullshit. Again, they're just traps. They're there to lure you in. Look at all these accounts spouting this fucking nonsense. They have hundreds of thousands of followers because they tell you what you want to hear and they will never tell you what you need to hear. So let me do that for you. Again, almost all of these price predictions are fucking nonsense. They will never, ever, ever hit the targets they are giving you. It will just not happen. So if you are making life-changing money, do what is best and start selling into actual money you can spend in the real world and not in fantasy land. All right? All right. Let's get back to it. So we got ID, right? Um, we get this rectangle, uh, sort of, kind of. It's not a great rectangle. Um, we get this low, we get this low. Oh, we get this clear high, uh, and then we get the, the consolidation below the retest of this resistance level. But then we get a really nice daily close through that level, which was a signal for me to go long with a stop below that significant candle. Um, my target is uh, 87 cents, slightly higher. Um, and that is when I sell. That is, what, that is when I'll sell. I don't have any emotional attachment to any of my positions i will sell when um price either reaches my target or when uh, things change in the crypto space and for risk assets in general uh, now is not the time to sell in my opinion 
but things again can change really, really quickly. Then we get Lido, 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 exact same thing, you know, um, I've posted this before. This was a very, very clear support level. We then break through this level. Uh, we try to get up there. We fail. Try to get up there again. We fail. Try to get up there again. We fail. We fail again. We get to the level, but fail to break through it. And then we get this beautiful daily candle here, which is when I go long. Uh, stop is below this candle. And now we're just looking and waiting for it to trend up uh, into this level here. I may look to uh, hold on to Lido a little longer as I consider Lido and ARB. Um, they, they move pretty well when Ethereum starts to really run. Uh, and I do think ETH will run and have its time soon. So this could potentially move higher uh, than my initial target. Then we get Sin, right? Sin is a, a very good looking chart. Uh, the reason for that is because we have really, really obvious highs. Uh, again, it is the exact same thing I do every single time. Uh, we get the low, we get the low, we get the low, then we get the break through those lows. Then we get support turning into resistance, right? We get it here again. And with very, very big rejection, rejections as well. It's not just trying to slightly peak above. It actually tries to break out aggressively, but then it's sold off aggressively as well. Uh, here too. Uh, trade way, way, way uh, lower. Try to get back up, fail back down below. We get the double bottom here. We get the neckline with the close through it. A retest of this uh, resistance as potential support breaks down. Uh, get back up, get another potential double bottom. I haven't traded any of these, uh, by the way. I'm just, I'm just uh, calling it as we go, as I go. Um, but then we get this close, right? This is the first potential uh, daily close after these two here. Um, the reason why I think this daily close is way more important than these, these ones is because this is the first time back around. Um, uh, so it, it is less significant. Um, this uh, close is after a lot more uh, price action has developed. So this is way more important. If we get a daily close above this level here, the gray area, the gray level, uh, it is a confirmed daily breakout to me. And I'll look to position long with a close below this candle. If we do start to break down, which would be a bad look, I will still look to position at the last high pre breakout. Uh, so that is my take on sin. I do think that if this starts to run, it is going to go uh, crazy and pretty fast as well. Uh, there are there are a few significant, well, not significant levels, but potential levels to watch, uh, which is this this level here. Uh, but again, it, it it doesn't jump at me per se. Uh, this, the same goes for this this area over here, which you could see as a potential short, uh, support resistance flip. But it's not it's not again it's not jumping out at me. So I think this is pretty inefficient market structure, uh, and I think we'll run up pretty pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, then we got Tau 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 is looking really good as well. Uh, you could potentially say. This is a really big cup and handle. Uh, it does look uh, like that, so it's not weird to play it as such. I was really hoping to get a fill here, had a good buy order there. Uh, really looks like the Lido chart, really looks like the Ether chart. Unfortunately, buyers started stepping in here uh, uh, at higher prices. Uh, then we get the rejection, try to get back up there failed but now we are back there once again uh, if we get a daily close above this high above this level i will look to position long for tau and target the 1200 level that is correct that is correct 
and we get zeta 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 uh, also a a good looking chart uh, we have the um, um, we have the ascending triangle forming right here 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 I don't think you're a fucking moron, by the way. I mean, I can actually, I know you can see these lows because I already drew the fucking trend line, right? Uh, Christ, and you can see price interact with the trend line. Uh, but this just makes talking to you a little, more, a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more uh, fun to do instead of just looking at a chart and uh, pointing at things. So that is why I do it. I don't think you're a moron at all. Uh, in any case, uh, these uh, this symmetrical triangle, this sorry, this ascending triangle, the horizontal boundary for this uh, pattern is uh, here. Uh, we get the first breakout here, but then we break down again. So then we get the second one over here. Now, did I position long yet? I did not because I consider these highs and this high to be significant which is why I want to see a daily close uh, over here through this level. If we do get this uh, breakout, uh, I will position uh, long with a, with a stop loss probably below this uh, candle here, which is kind of the breakout candle through the uh, uh, symmetrical fucking hell, the ascending triangle. I've been a little bit uh, sick for the last few days and I got a fucking headache so uh, pardon me for the uh, mistakes I make every now and then I am human after all then we get uh, ZRO and this is looking really nice I mean this is this is a very clear rectangle right it's it's really obvious to anyone uh, three percent above the uh, upper boundary of the rectangle is going to be a confirmed breakout now unless this is going to turn into a really ugly rejection candle today this is uh, this is going to be a clear breakout uh i have already positioned long because i do suspect this will just well break out and confirm the breakout i have also um put in buy orders to buy a retest of this level and then trade it up uh, again this is this is a beautiful chart a uh, clear breakout breakout to me and um yeah this should uh, this should do good then we got say say i like this chart i do like it uh you could play this two ways you could wait for the breakout the confirmed breakout through this level uh because i think that is the current most um uh, important uh, support resistance flip uh, we have flipped this into resistance only once, though. Uh, and this is the second time back at it, where it is acting as resistance uh, as we speak. Uh, but it is also consolidating below resistance, which it, which usually tends to uh, break out to the upside. Uh, if we don't, and if we start trading down back uh, here, I will look to buy the last high free breakout with a stop below this thrust candle over here, and then look to play it all the way up here. Uh, can you play this and, and hold this to uh, new highs? You absolutely can. Uh, will I do so? I will not. Uh, if I get this trade, it'll be a, uh, uh, it'll be a uh, over six R trade. That is uh, fine by me. I have other longer term positions to hold, so I don't need to hold all of these positions to new highs. Yeah, that is uh, that is uh, that is it. Sturdy looking, uh, absolutely fabulous. Um, Efi looking uh, pretty good as well. I really want to see us break through this level over here, and then trade um, back up uh, again. These these well, I'm saying again. It's the first time I'm mentioning this right now. These are uh, low cap altcoins. They're extremely, extremely volatile. Please trade these at your own risk. Uh, please do not um, use more money than you can and probably will lose. So I got a, uh, a question if I also trade NFTs. Uh, somebody said, well, I see you uh, trade low cap altcoins. Do you also trade NFTs? 
Uh, I don't trade NFTs, but I am happy to inform you that I am a, a proud JPEG holder. Um, I don't have a, a whole bunch of them. I just have a couple. And there is there is actually one I'm, I'm still really bullish on. Uh, so I will give them a uh, an honorable mention. And that is Kanpai Pandas. Kanpai, yeah, that is Japanese. Uh, pandas, uh, you know, I don't have to tell you. Kanpai Pandas just kind of hard to pronounce the different types of A's in a single name. Um, anyway, I, I really like this project. I have liked it for a very long time. They're doing just really cool stuff. I like the fact that you're collecting points. You can then trade these points to pimp up uh, or spice up your uh, NFT, meaning it'll actually become more unique, meaning it'll actually increase in value. Um, you can use your points to, you know, buy uh, tickets to pretty, pretty badass events, um, different types of sporting events, and they sponsor really, really big athletes. I don't know if you're into UFC or MMA at all, but if you are, you know, uh, guys like John Jones, arguably the greatest of all time. Uh, so he's sponsored by uh, by Kampai Pandas. I just like I just like these man. I don't know. Maybe I am a little biased because I've been holding this uh, holding these for over uh, I think over a year now. Uh, but I've never seen the the reason to sell them yet. While while I am still in in profit on them, um, yeah. Just just have a look. You know, if you look at all the other ones, pudgy penguins, uh, bored apes. These these have a a lot of room to uh, run. And I think they will become one of the blue chip NFTs, meaning these have the, in my, in my eyes, in my opinion, uh, the biggest potential for uh, 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 an upcoming NFT run. Will NFTs catch the same bid they did last cycle? I don't know. I don't think so, but I really don't know. Um, but even if they get half of it, you know, this, these babies are going to run. These babies are going to run for sure. So uh, check them out and you can do uh, really cool stuff with them. Um, yeah, that is, that, is, that is it for now, guys. I really appreciate you tuning in again. Uh, please like this video if you haven't done so already. Uh, like. Yeah, so that is uh, that is it for now, guys. Thank you so much once again for tuning in. I really, really appreciate the likes. Uh, so like this video if you haven't done so already. Please leave a comment if you want. You know, give me uh, um, uh, criticism, give me compliments, uh, or even chart requests. I'll be happy to look at the uh, coin you are currently holding, which will, of course, do a thousand x within the next four weeks. I'll happily uh, have, a, have a look for you. Uh, see you again next week. And I'll try to do a little more videos on specific topics. Uh, the first one being which books you should definitely read as a trader or as a trader to be. For now, thanks again. Have a good week. Happy trading and see you next time.